This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. An incumbent village councilman here was shot dead by a still unidentified suspect on Christmas Day. Captain Eduardo Maligdam, police station 4 chief, said village councilman Datu Mahmud Lorban and his son were sitting on a waiting shed at 3 p.m. when two men on board a motorbike arrived, then shot them at close range but the son was unhurt. Lorban, 59, a resident of Barangay Bagwa 1, died instantly, Maligdam said. Lobin sustained gunshot wounds in different parts of his body and was pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital, Milikdom said. Responding police found three empty shells of caliber 45 pistol at the crime scene. The motive of the attack could be rido, family feud, or personal grudge, police said. The Sandagan Bayan has affirmed the conviction for malversation of public funds involving 4.08 million pesos in 1997 of the former provincial cashier of Bengut, affirmed were the judgments of conviction in 12 cases of former cashier for Esther S. Pagano who was sentenced by the regional trial court to prison terms ranging from 2 to 7 years in 11 cases, and from 10 to 16 years in one case. Pagano was convicted when she incurred cash shortage of 1,051,124 pesos and 3,029,675 pesos or a total of 4,080,799 pesos. She was responsible for collecting cash and checks under the province's general fund then depositing these with the depository banks maintained by the province of Bengut. However, the trial court found that the shortages were incurred because of Pagano's failure to issue official receipts for the purpose of acknowledging several checks intended as interest payments. Pagano appealed the trial court's ruling before the anti-graft court. She claimed that the RTC erred in convicting her because the mandatory element of misappropriation or conversion is absent in this case. The Sandagan Bayan disagreed. The prosecution proved all the elements of malversation beyond reasonable doubt, it said in its decision dated the 20th of December, 2023. Time and again, the Supreme Court has emphasized that an accountable public officer may be convicted of malversation even if there is no direct evidence of misappropriation and the only evidence is that there is a shortage in his her accounts which he she has not been able to explain satisfactorily, the anti-graft court said. A police officer was removed from his post and placed under restrictive custody after he accidentally fired his gun in Malabon City. Colonel Jean Fajardo, chief information officer of the Philippine National Police, said the police officer, whom she did not identify, is under investigation. He is under custody and his firearm was confiscated, she told reporters in a phone interview yesterday. Fajardo said the incident occurred in Malabon on 23 December. Seven people have been accosted so far for illegal discharge of firearms during the Yuletide season. Two of the violators are police officers, two more are military personnel while the rest are civilians. Fajardo warned gun holders not to use their firearms in celebrating Christmas and New Year since they would face criminal charges if they are caught. She also urged the public to report people indiscriminately firing their guns and to document the incident to serve as evidence. Seven more employees of the Negros Occidental Provincial Government were tested positive for use of illegal drugs. This brings the total number to 27 capital employees who were found using drugs during its mandatory drug test. Provincial Administrator Ray Frando Diaz II said Wednesday, the 27th of December, that five of the employees are from the Teresita Lopez Jalandoni Provincial Hospital in Salai City and two are from the Cadiz District Hospital. However, Diaz said he will not reveal how many of them are regular casual, contract of service, or job order employees. We will reveal it only after their confirmatory tests come out in January next year, he said. The results also show that five of the employees use shabu, while the other two use marijuana. The results of 16 other employees also showed traces of shabu. Earlier, 20 out of the more than 3,200 provincial government employees tested positive for drugs this month. It is not alarming, but they will suffer the consequences. That was their choice to do what they did, Governor Eugenio Jose Laxon warned. He added, we will purchase additional drug testing kits to cover the remaining employees assigned at the district hospitals operated by the provincial government. The Department of Tourism overspent 2.6 million pesos for its hotel accommodations in 2022, the Commission on Audit said in its annual audit report, in its AAR. 
COA recommended that the DOT refund the excessive costs incurred by concerned officials and employees and strictly adhere to Executive Order No. 77 when preparing the budget estimate or terms of reference for the contracts of its programs and activities to avoid excessive expenditures for hotel accommodations and meals. COA pointed out that Section 5 of Executive Order No. 77 provides the maximum allowable daily travel expenses to government personnel. These include local travel, hotel accommodation or lodging, meals, and incidental expenses including the cost for local or inland transportation. It said that when state auditors review 10 sample contracts from the DOT's office of the Secretary for the period of 1 January to 31 August, 2022, they discovered that the rates provided in the budget estimate of eight contracts exceeded the amount prescribed under EO No. 77 by 1,547,913 pesos. It was concluded that the DOT OSEC's procurement of hotel accommodation lodging was not in compliance in all material respects with the provisions of Section 5 of EO No. 77, the report said. Similar observations were noted in the Cordillera Administrative Region and Region 3 and 9. It said, the maximum amount allowed per audit for the OSEC was 539,000 pesos, but the actual expenses made by the OSEC was 962,679 pesos. The allowable amount for CAR was 267,300 pesos, but the region spent 560,630 pesos. Region 3 was allowed 1,267,500 pesos, but it spent 2,159,450 pesos, while Region 9 was allowed 608,450 pesos but spent 1,610,769 pesos. All in all, COA said the DOT overspent 2,611,278 pesos for hotel accommodations and lodging. At least seven incidents of illegal discharge of firearms have been reported so far ahead of the New Year celebration, the Philippine National Police said on Tuesday. PNP spokesperson Police Colonel Jean Fajardo said two cops, two soldiers, a civilian, and two unidentified persons were involved in these incidents. From the 6th of December to yesterday, we recorded seven incidents of illegal discharge of firearms, Fajardo told GTV's Balotangheli. Two police officers and two soldiers were included in that list. The incidents involving two police officers were reported in Davao and Manila. One of them fired a gun three times on the ground outside of residence due to a family problem. The other cop also shot on the ground when he was ignored by some residents he scolded for being noisy. Both of them used their service firearms in the incidents. According to Faha though, these guns have already been confiscated. Except for the two unidentified suspects, all of them have been arrested and are facing criminal complaints. Five gunmen, including a village councilman, who were followers of a village chair and field commander of Moro Islamic Liberation Front were killed in clashes that erupted Saturday afternoon, police here said. Major Arvin John Kambang, Pickett Municipal Police Chief, said the fighting between Chairman Sindatok Karim of Barangay Lagand and Basit Nando, alias Commander Abu Sabaya, head of MILF 118th Base Command, erupted at about 3 p.m. in Sishio Edzap, Barangay Lagand. Picket, North Cotabato. Barangay Lagand is one of the 63 villages now under the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. Kambang identified the fatalities under the group of Chairman Karima's village councilman Malik Karim, Sami Nawal Salik, a Barangay Peacekeeping Action Team member. At the same time, those injured were BPAT members Saddam Salaban, 33, and Kanan Asmil, 33, both residents of Barangay Lagand. Killed on the side of Commander Abla Sabuya Wakina Abdullah, 35 Omar Abdullah, 38, and an unidentified person. Elements of the 90th Infantry Battalion backed the picket PNP in disengaging the warring armed groups and the recovery of the fatalities. They are locked in long-standing widow or family feud over a territorial misunderstanding, Kambang said in the vernacular. Kambang said the group of Chairman Karim claimed that they were working on a Barangay Road project when the group of Commander Abla Sabuya arrived and opened fire. Triggering a firefight that lasted for about an hour. Kambang quoted Abla Sabaya as telling police probers that the group of Chairman Karim entered his area of operation without coordination. But Kambang said Abla Sabaya has a grudge against Chairman Karim because he suspected that the village officials' followers were behind the murder in November of his two relatives. 
Soldiers from the 90th IB and personnel from Police Mobile Force Battalion 14 are now in the area to serve as peacekeepers and prevent the escalation of hostilities. Several families have fled to nearby villages. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.